22,000 years ago, at the height of the last ice age, this beautiful beach here did not exist. What is now Bathers Bay, in Fremantle, Western Australia, was more than 40 kilometres inland. But how do we know that? I'm going to show you how you can use freely available data to map submerged landscapes anywhere in the world. To map the extent of land in the past, we need two data sets, a sea level curve and a digital elevation model. To make this simple, we're going to look at the last glacial maximum, when sea levels were lowest, at most about 130 metres below present day. For the digital elevation model, we'll use the GEBCO 2020 gridded bathymetry data, which is a map of the world's seabed. I've heard that back in the day you could walk from mainland Australia to Tasmania. This is knowledge that's come from traditional owners and is supported by archaeological evidence. Let's see how that would work. Command click and drag to select an area of interest. We're going to select the bottom of Victoria here and Tasmania, giving us plenty of room. Let's select the gridded geotiff and add that to our downloads. Opening it up, we can see that it really doesn't tell us a lot. This isn't meant for image editors. It's meant to be used in a geographic information system, or GIS. This is how most archaeologists make maps. The one we're going to use is QGIS. It's free and open source and can be downloaded from their website. With QGIS open, drag the data into the main canvas to make a new project. And we can get to work styling it. In the view menu, turn on the layer styling panel. First set this to single band pseudo color, which will translate the heights to colors. Then we'll set the interpolation to discrete because we're working with contours. And we're going to color these by our research question. First, negative 130 meters, the lowest sea level during the last ice age. Let's choose negative 30, which is the deepest most people can dive. Zero is where present sea level is on this map. We'll keep this infinity, which is just everything above a certain value and delete this one that we don't need. Let's use some more appropriate colors. We probably want some blues and some greens. I've prepared some earlier. Off first, we want to set everything below 130 to white. We're not interested in it, so we'll just be blank. These ones can be some nice blue. And for this one, we probably want to choose some nice green. To help with our legend, it's important to label all of these. And to rename the layer to Gebco Global Bathymetry. One last thing, you can see this looks a little bit squished. For people who grew up on the internet, most of us are familiar with the projection Google Maps uses. You can search for Google Maps Global Mercator and select that which looks a little bit more reasonable. To give this map a little bit more context, we might want to add in the population centers. Natural Earth has a whole bunch of data that's really helpful for situations like this. We're able to just drag this in, label it by name, and polish the style a little bit. This looks a little bit cluttered. We probably just want the capital cities. If you open up the feature attributes, you can see it has this feature class with admin one capital. We can directly filter that. Equals admin one capital. There we go. Now we've just got Melbourne and Hobart. And for the legend, we're going to rename this to capital cities. To finish this off for publication, we need to add a scale bar and a legend. In the project menu, go to new print layout. We want to set this to square and add in the map. This tool here helps us frame. I think that looks nice. We can add in our scale bar, default looks good, and our legend. Lastly, we can export that as an image.
And there is our final result. I think that looks pretty nice. Just remember, when you're using this for publication, in your caption it's important to cite the data sources and emphasize that it's just an estimate using modern bathymetry. Thank you for watching, I hope that helped you, and I'd love to see if you make any interesting maps.